Shame has no place in the life of an empowered believer. Why? Because shame is an emotion. It's there long after you put those things behind you. Long after the guilt goes away, the shame remains. The guilt deals with your activity, but shame tries to speak to you about your identity. Good morning, um, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching at this time. It's, it's me again, it's Aaron T. Aaron. Today um, is day two, and we're looking at the topic, um, shame is not my name. And today we're just going to further explore that topic or title, shame is not your name. Um, isn't it funny how our instinct is to avoid eye contact? Um, when we know we've done something wrong. And it's not learned behavior either. Uh, um, when I look at how my kids are growing, I remember uh, or when they were still in diapers, anytime they knew they had done something wrong, um, their eyes would deliberately avoid mine, especially my, my two-year-old at the moment. Um, in fact, um, if I remember clearly, when I got into trouble once while I was playing football, um, when my parents were supposed to have been going, gone away for a convention and, and my parents, um, all of a sudden drove past me on the street, um, where I was supposed to be studying at home. Um, and, and this is me all of a sudden trying to sneak back into the house. Um, it wasn't fear that kept me outside um, or afraid of wanting to face my parents, knowing that I was in wrong. It wasn't fear, it was shame. Because the thing is shame wants to put the that shame distance between you and your heavenly father. The same way shame was trying to put me, put a wedge between me and my dad. Shame wants to put the same distance between you and your heavenly father. Shame wants you standing on, um, you know, when you stand in front of the door, <laughs> afraid to knock on the door. The truth is we've all made decisions that we're all ashamed of, but it's one thing to deal with guilt. Like I said yesterday, it's a whole other thing to deal with shame. Shame is defined as a painful emotion arising from the consciousness of something dishonoring. Shame is defined as a painful emotion arising from the consciousness of something dishonoring. That's according to the Oxford English Dictionary. By contrast, guilt is defined as to commit an offense. Same Oxford English Dictionary. You see, guilt can actually be a gift, like I said yesterday. When the Holy Spirit brings conviction into our lives, it is for us to get rid of something that's toxic unhealthy or sinful so that our relationship with our heavenly father can even be closer guilt has to do with things that are presently holding us back things that we're actively participating in which is why it is defined as a verb or action guilt can actually be good for us it can it can caution us away from harm Let's just look at what Paul says in 2 Corinthians um, 7 verse 10. I'll just pick the top bit. He says, now this type of deep sorrow, godly sorrow, is not so much about regret, but it is about a change of mind and behavior. The voice translation, I'll read that again. It says, now this type of deep sorrow, godly sorrow, is not so much about regret, but it's about a change of mind and behavior. Did you catch that? Godly sorrow or guilt is not about regret, but simply changing our behavior. So if guilt can be good, what about shame? Let me be clear. Shame has no place in the life of an empowered believer. Why? Because shame is an emotion. It's there long after you put those things behind you. Long after the guilt goes away, the shame remains. The guilt deals with your activity, but shame tries to speak to you about your identity. Shame doesn't deal with just what you've done. Shame tries to tell you who you are because of what you've done. 
And there's no place for that blame in the life of an empowered believer. Let's read what Paul goes on to say about shame. But the other type of sorrow, remember, talks first about godly sorrow. But the other type of sorrow, worldly sorrow, only brings death. That's 2 Corinthians 9, 10b. And I think Paul makes it pretty clear here that shame isn't there to help. Shame wants to take us out. It wants us identifying ourselves by our past mistakes, that it is not the life God has called us to. That is not the life God has called us to at all. And it's no coincidence that Paul is the one making this point. <laughs> you may not be familiar with his story, but if ever there was a man who understood shame, it was Paul. Before he became the Apostle Paul, he was known as Saul, who was famous for his brutal, murderous persecution of Christians. If he had let his past mistakes, of which there were many, <laughs> many, if he allowed those mistakes to define him, nearly half of the New Testament wouldn't have existed or written. So can you imagine that? And Paul recognized the difference between godly conviction and a destructive mindset. One leads to an empowered life, that's godly conviction, and the other leads death, leads to death. So it's our choice to make. As we embark on this journey, it's our choice to make which one we would follow to govern our lives. Do we want a godly conv conviction or do we want a destructive mindset? I hope this has been a blessing to you. Um, please make sure you download the PDF and answer the reflective questions that I've asked. Today, I want you to take some time today to reflect on the following. What are some of the labels shame has tried to make you wear? I said yesterday that shame is like wearing forgiving sins as name tags. So what are some labels shame has tried to make you wear? Another question I'd like you to consider. What are some areas where you allowed shame to distract you from living an empowered life? In what areas of your life have you allowed shame to distract you from living an empowered life? I would like you to also consider and answer, what are some activities in your life that you have been convicted about or that you're feeling a godly soul about or taught? I want you to take a moment, write them down with today's date and commit to no longer let them take you down this destructive path. I really do hope this has helped. And we're just gonna share some scriptures quickly Nehemiah 9, 17b says, but you are a God of forgiveness, gracious and mercy, slow to become angry and rich. Luke 17 verse four says, even if that person wrongs you seven times a day and each time turns again, ask for forgiveness, you must forgive. Um, Romans 5, 15 says, but even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness to many through this other man, Jesus Christ. Luke 6, 37 says, forgive others and you will be forgiven. Ephesians 4, 32a says, instead be kind, compassionate, graciously forgive one another, just as God has forgiven you. 1 John 2, 12 says, I am writing to you who are God's children because your sins have been forgiven through Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thank you.